Hey guys, Basil here with BTEC, talking you through the camera UI of the Nokia 8. The Nokia 8 has dual 13 megapixel cameras, 13 megapixel camera on the front. All of them have F2 lenses, but the rear camera is one monochrome, one black and white. So how does the camera UI stack up? I've got a Lumia 1020 for comparison so that we can take a look at the old Lumia camera UI. Before I jump into these two phones, if you're not already subscribed to BTEC, subscribe. It's how you stay on top of everything that we do. Right, first things first, fire up the camera on the Lumi, on the Nokia 8, cover up the bottom one. The bottom one is clearly the color one. Yeah, the color, the top one is the black and white one. Instantly, that's something I found out. I need to pull this off screen so I can give the lenses a wipe now so that I can run through everything else within the UI. So the bottom one being the color lens, we can see at the top, you can actually choose which lens you want to use. If you want to choose twin, monochrome, or indeed the single color lens. In experimentation, there's very little difference between using twin or the color lens in isolation. Slightly better dynamic range, potentially. I didn't find it gave much better low light performance. I've actually got a sample, which I'll overload on screen. Um, you can see that's a side-by-side -side between the two. The first one was twin, and you can see plenty of noise. And on the left one, exactly the same, but at the same time, clean crisp lines around the black razor as you would expect. So as far as the black and white sensor goes, that seems to be the only one that actually produces less noise. So if you're in a noisy environment, don't mind shooting black and white. You're gonna end up with a very crisp picture if you shoot in monochrome. Right, so that's the option to toggle your lenses. To the right of that, you've got the option to toggle your camera front, rear, or dual. Have half the screen front, half the screen rear. You've got some options from three seconds to 10 seconds for timers. You've got auto HDR, HDR on or HDR off, and you've got flash auto on or off. Below that, you've got the option to jump between live bokeh mode, um, and that will create a degree of background blur. So I have a subject which I'm quickly gonna take a picture of, and that is a t-shirt. And you can see opening up that picture, it's blurred out the background. I can then press the editor icon and choose to select the bokeh editor. And I can then retrospectively focus on the background focus on the foreground. So that's a live bokeh mode. Jumping out of that to the left of it, you have a manual mode. It isn't a true manual mode. No, it is unfortunately a kind of staggered manual mode. So you have various options that you can choose from. Auto, evaluative metering or center weighted. Your focus can be either infinity or macro. There's no manual focus. Um, and white balance, again, it's a series of presets. I can't see any Kelvin setting and exposure just plus or minus two stops. Jumping out of manual mode. Um, so yeah, that's one of the main things that I found. Um, I personally, as a photographer, likes to jump into manual quite a lot. Didn't enjoy about it. So you've got panorama mode and you've got a beautify mode as well. But I'm gonna stick with photo for now. Jumping into the uh, movies, you can see you have very few options by comparison. So you either shoot slow motion, video, or time lapse and you can broadcast straight to YouTube or Facebook Live as well. And that bit is pretty sweet. Just yet though, you can't broadcast to a secondary YouTube account. It has to be your primary one. So I can't broadcast from here to BTEC through this camera. It has to be through the YouTube application. You also have an option to the right though, which is cool, lets you change the microphone front or rear or surround. I have it set to surround. For an example as to how the surround mics work, check out my HTCU 11 comparison video. Jump into the settings and you can switch on a bunch of stuff. You can switch on levels, you can also switch on altitude, compass, compass tags, shut. It's a lot of stuff that I personally probably wouldn't use. I'd have rather they gave me manual mode, for example, instead of that. But you can also control the resolutions. And what's great about the front camera is that it shoots up to 4K video. So does the rear camera, um, and they all shoot the same 13 megapixel right down to two megapixel resolution images. And that is the cameras. My personal preference when it's low light is to jump into a black and white shot. I find that delivers the least amount of noise. The difference between shooting in twin and in a uh, like single color camera is absolutely minimal. I found it maybe produces a slightly better um, dynamic range, um, but colors maybe pop a little bit more, but it isn't particularly noticeable. A noise reduction doesn't feel much 
better. So as a result, the twin camera is what I tend to just leave it on. And when I want to flip out of that, I flip into the uh, monochrome camera. I will also say that the camera UI isn't super intuitive just yet. It needs to get a bit better. I've said this a few times, tap through on monochrome when you're in photo in order to take a monochrome video, which performs really, really nicely actually. But unfortunately, if I want it while in video mode, keep it in monochrome, that's great. But if I want to swap to color, I have to jump back out of video mode into photo mode, tap through on there and jump through to twin or color and then back into video mode. And it's just a quite convoluted user experience. So that was a stock camera user interface. But what about third party options? Well, the first one I tend to install is camera FV5 or manual camera. This delivers raw imaging support as well. So for example, I can manual focus, closest focal range, cancel, I can then tap through on that picture and I can see exactly what is in focus. I can open it up, double tap, and I have a nice sharp picture at some point in my focal range. And generally it got me better results than the stock camera app about eight times out of 10. Plus it abated the control freak in me that just likes to shoot in manual. And like I said, raw support showcases exactly how good a sensor really is. Though the third application I installed was really, really interesting. This was uh, pointed out by David, thanks to one of the commenters, um, as well as someone else who sent through the XDA link. So I can open that up. It is a Google Pixel XL camera launcher. I mean, that works with just simple tap to focus, but what it can do is using software, it can showcase some dynamic range clout. So if I tap through on the 13 on there, and or maybe go a little bit further, tap through on the six tag picture because it hasn't got that mad close focus, then jump out of that application, tap through on the stock one, tap through on the six tag logo. Then what's likely happened is the stock one will have exposed it a little bit more. But what's really nice is that the Pixel XL camera has underexposed the screen, not massively underexposed the backdrop. And as a result, you can see has just pulled out that little bit more detail from the screen and you haven't got quite as flat an image. You can actually see some of the like banding of the pixels, which isn't always ideal, but it actually showcases that it can be a sharper camera. Um, the HDR tends to work across all scenarios that little bit better using the camera launcher from the Google Pixel. However, it is not a one-stop shop. It isn't optimized to record video just yet. Once you record a video, it doesn't actually save as a video file. So as a result, after using the Nokia 8 for a fair while, I'd say that the camera UI needs a bit of work. The camera sensor is capable of achieving much better results than the software within delivers, um, but you can download some applications through the Google Play Store or through XDA developers that pull that little bit more out of it. I'm looking forward to seeing what Nokia does. In an ideal world, Nokia will do something like this, firing up the Lumia, Lumia camera user interface and um, you can see swipe in from the right, you've got the ring system. I can then whack my shutter speed, change out to manual focus, closest focal range. I can then zoom right in or yeah, there you go. Closest focal range, zoom right in so that I can see exactly what is in focus. My benchmarking is in focus. I can take my picture, shaky hand and all it is saving it. And then because of the power of the pure view, I can then see that picture I can even reframe it and zoom out so I get the whole picture. The Nokia Lumia 1020 was banging. Fingers crossed Nokia produces more banging camera phones. In the meantime, the Nokia A is, like I've just said, a very capable one provided you aren't afraid of a little tinkering. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that thumbs up button, like the channel, subscribe. It's how you'll stay on top of everything we do and make sure you stay tuned over the next few days, be it IFA, via anything that you really want to see out there in comments and I will do my best to get it on this channel. Have a great day.